Hello and welcome to all our viewers around the world. Each time we'll be bringing you inspiring and compelling profiles each and every story you tell gets us closer to people who have the power to bring in change and make a difference. guest, Ambassador Fatou Shazli, walking the path of success about 40 years in the field of diplomacy. Now we'll be uh, digging a little bit with him to discover and enjoy those glamorous moments of success. Uh, I'll kick start by asking you about those researches. You presented about uh, 60 researches and uh, in different fields. For different um, in Arabic and in English, give us a little bit more information about your researching period. I would say that research is very important for a, mm. a diplomat because mm. diplomats, professional diplomats again, mm. are actually the uh, eyes and ears of mm. their uh, home country mm. outside. And whatever they say could lead the headquarters to taking decisions that may impact the national interest and the national security. Mm -hmm. So a professional diplomat should be able to conduct his research in order to mm -hmm. enlighten his knowledge mm -hmm. and uh, to give the proper advice mm -hmm. to the headquarters. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, have been able to produce a great number of researches of uh, security, national uh, security, comprehensive security, cooperative security, disarmament, mm. uh, economic integration, mm. uh, water issues, mm. uh, and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I was feeding this interest mm. in conducting research by uh, reading and by meeting people mm. uh, and talking to them. Mm. One of your researches won uh, the prize of the Supreme Council for Islamic uh, Affairs. Is that true? Uh, that was the first research. The in first in, in fact, I did it when I was still uh, in the university because I wanted to, mm. uh, it was a, a, a competition organized mm. by the Supreme Council mm. for Islamic Affairs about It was on the topic of the uh, economy in uh, exactly, Islam. Exactly, exactly. Mm. Yeah, so mm. that was my first uh, research mm. uh, work and uh, it won an award by the Supreme Council. Mm -hmm. Now we move to talk about those awards uh, you will achieve. You've been awarded uh, two prizes in your life. Give us some details about those moments. Uh, no, I, uh, you are referring to what exactly? Uh, throughout your career, you've been uh, honored four times, as I've seen in your CV. Uh, tell us a little bit about those uh, moment of success. The, the first decoration mm. was in fact the, uh, given to me by mm. the king of Sweden. Uh, it is the polar star decoration mm. or order I would say. Mm. And the second decoration was mm. uh, King Abdul Aziz Al Saud decoration. Mm. Uh, first grade given to me by King Fahd of Saudi Arabia. Uh, 
not Nava. One of your uh, posts, it was in uh, Sweden, uh, special uh, period you spent there, the and there's also some information about being member of a committee for the museum with no frontiers. Yeah, very All good. new information. <laughs> yeah, in, we in, need to in put in a lot Sweden, of explanation. Sweden is a very important <laughs> country, and, and I would say a very important station in my diplomatic career, mm. because uh, Sweden is a very idealistic mm. society. Yeah. Uh, they, the people. Mm. First of all, they feel snobbish. Mm -hmm. They are uh, aware mm -hmm. of uh, their special status as a very uh, industrialized country. Mm -hmm. I would call it the first uh, post-industrial society, say the uh, society of information. Mm -hmm. Because many people uh, who would uh, believe in mm. this different successions of uh, appellation, qualifications from the agricultural society uh, to the industrial society, etc., mm. now talk about the informatics society mm. or the information society. Mm. I would say that Sweden is number one and and this concern mm. uh, where the uh, sense of responsibility mm. is both personal mm. on behalf of every individual citizen mm. and collective also mm. uh, they represent the conscience of of the world of humanity I recall uh, that Olof Palme, mm -hmm. one of the uh, most outstanding uh, mm -hmm. uh, politicians in Sweden, who was assassinated uh, later on, mm -hmm. he was, while he was prime minister, mm -hmm. elected prime minister, mm -hmm. he was demonstrating against the American intervention and American war in Vietnam, for instance. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, Sweden is very special, mm. uh, beautiful country also, mm. beautiful people, uh, and uh, that was also during the formative years mm. I was uh, enjoying in my diplomatic career. Uh, but if I move, uh, in order not to dwell too long on Sweden, I would move to the Museum with No Frontiers yes, yeah. organization, mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, an attempt by... In uh, fact, we'd like to put some information to explain the name, Museum with No Frontiers. Yes, mm -hmm. because they, the, 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 the launcher of this idea, mm -hmm. Mrs. Eva Schubert, mm -hmm. she comes from Vienna, from uh, Austria, mm -hmm. And uh, she wanted to y use the mm -hmm. techniques of the day, mm -hmm. internet and computer, mm -hmm. in order to create a virtual museum, mm -hmm. a virtual museum mm -hmm. that would be even much more effective mm -hmm. to show the monuments and the arts better than the real museum, mm -hmm. because if you have a, a, an object mm. in that virtual museum you should be able to turn it around to have you, you cannot touch an object mm. on display mm. in a conventional museum mm. but in the virtual museum you can turn the object over you can uh, uh, read about its history you can know the dimensions uh, uh, exactly, etc. Mm -hmm. So the idea is at the end of the mm -hmm. day to create a virtual museum. Nevertheless, it is now the uh, worry of uh, uh, Eva Schobert mm -hmm. to implement a very interesting project which is called Sharing History.
mm-hmm. sharing history between Europe and uh, the Arab world during the last two centuries mm-hmm. and uh, creating specialized exhibitions, mm-hmm. series of exhibitions mm-hmm. that would show to outsiders the uh, manifestations of the interaction between Europe and Egypt in our case. Uh, let me jump and talk about Venezuela, another force. You witnessed yeah. the country changing from the military to civil rule. Yeah, because in, in, in fact, I served there uh, a few years after their, uh, the, the military uh, had to cede authority uh, to revolutionary civilians who took power there. Uh, but Venezuela for me was very interesting because uh, I, uh, during my uh, time, I uh, coincided. My time there coincided with the tenor, the first tenor of uh, a very uh, interesting uh, president, a personage in the history of Venezuela, uh, Carlos Andres Perez. He, he called himself El Presidente que camina meaning that the president who walks, meaning that he wanted to convince the uh, public that he was the president who can take the country forward. It was uh, uh, very interesting from the point of view of democratic behavior and the playing politics in an open society. It was very educational, I would say. There, for instance, I was uh, uh, exposed to political parties, to a party being in power and another being in the opposition, and the relationship between the two, to uh, the imperativeness of uh, creating a kind of uh, pact of honor, uh, terms of reference to govern the relations between different parties, between those who are in power and those who are in opposition. That was my experience about Venezuela, which uh, actually inspired me lately to publish an article, in fact, a research work that was published in Egyptian newspapers uh, about parties, political parties, let me take you now to talk about one of the special uh, occupations of your life. It's working on demining of the northern coast. Ah, yes. I don't call it demining. Mm-hmm. It is because it is called internationally, according to international specifications mm-hmm. of the META, mm-hmm. mine action. Mine action. Mine action. Mm-hmm. Mine actions mm-hmm. has five pillars. Mm-hmm. Demining and mine clearance, mm. victim assistance, mm. mine risk education, advocacy, mm. and there is a fifth pillar, which is demolition of stockpile, national stockpile of mm. 